what made you want to do Manchester by the Sea? I wanted to, um, I'd always wanted to work with Kenny for a, um, such a long time after seeing You Can Count On Me and after seeing his plays. And then he had asked me to read a play of his once and I was very pregnant, like eight and a half months pregnant. And I said, no, I can't possibly do that because I'm pregnant. And <laughs> I, I can't because I was so nervous about like being bad and I was just looking for any excuse and I was like, because I'm pregnant means I can't read this part in your play and he's like that's ridiculous come and do it and so then I worked with him a little bit and it always just like since then it's like 10 10 years later I've just held it in like the back of my head as like a little fantasy like maybe one day I could work with Kenny Lawner again he's he's amazing I remember the first time I saw you can count and not you can count on me the first time I saw um Oh my God, I'm having such a This is our brain. youth. This is our youth, thank you. I'm here for you. And the first time I saw This is our youth, I was like, this is something so new and like the style of acting and the, uh, the dialogue and everything just felt so different. Then. I know, he has this weird gift for making things seem really natural and normal and like kind of like there's nothing happening, but then in the end, something transcendent has just occurred. And you wouldn't mistake a Kenny Lonergan piece of writing for anything else. That's totally Even true. though it's so like humble and like simple and um, yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's one of a kind. Totally. But I would say much like the filmmaker that you worked with and Jackie. Um, how did you, how did it, how did it, how did you find it? How did it, how did you get the courage to say? Yeah, yeah. It seemed kind of crazy to do because I was, I'm not really like an impersonator. That's not sort of my like. I've never thought of it as something I could really do you know I'm not someone who can like do imitations of people or anything like that and to have someone so well known was really scary so I kind of Darren um, Aronofsky had um, he got it to direct first and then he decided not to direct it and so he sent it to me when he was just thinking of producing it like five years ago and was kind of throwing out all these different directors and I was just kind of like, nah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think this is really a good idea. And then he called me last year and said that he had seen Pablo Lorraine's film at the Berlin Film Festival where he was on the jury. And he was like, I think this is the guy. You should watch his films. And so I saw his films and then I met him. And he just had this, he has this like aura around him that you see that he has a, such a strong vision. And his films have such a strong point of view. And, and he was just like very daring about it. And, and I don't know if you can relate to this, but logistically it like also worked with my life. Totally, <laughs> <laughs> geography is everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, we'll shoot in Paris. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so um, basically logistically it was really, it worked and there was a very interesting director and the part was really scary. I was never really like, enthusiastic about that part because it just scared me a lot um but it's also good to you do scary think, stuff all the I time i think you'd have you to did. be like some sort of crazy person to be like really enthusiastic about like jumping off a cliff of your abilities yeah. you know well, I, I but you did maryland i mean but how did you like, do that accent you're shooting in paris and you're doing jackie o's accent that must yeah. have been a really strange um <laughs> two worlds to yeah, well, I had this there's this amazing coach, um, Tanya Blumstein, who I'd been working with on a film. I, work, I did a film right before this that I had to speak French in, and she trained me for that, and she's American living in Paris, and she's wow. actually a dialect coach, but the jobs she usually gets there are helping you know, non-French people speak French or helping French people speak English. So she was amazing, and so she, she helped me, and um, we just... You know, I'm sure you did the same thing with Did you have to stay Maryland, in it just... all the time, basically? Did you no, feel like you had to, like... I couldn't. I I mean, not, like, when you went home, but... Yeah, Like, yeah. during the day, did you feel like you had to stay in it? Sometimes I find Even... it so alienating, like, to be in something, but the accent that you're around is different, and... Right. That's definitely hard, but at the same... I just feel... I don't know. I can't. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I find that I have this weird part of my brain, though, the can't way that it, it stores accents. So sometimes when I'm working on like a British accent, all of a sudden like Maryland comes out or it comes out <laughs> Southern because it's like accessing accent brain. It's and so true. sometimes I find it helpful to just stay in it. Otherwise, I get I get confused about. Yeah, that what, makes sense. It would probably be much better if I did that. I'm just 
kind of incapable. It's embarrassing. Like, it's really embarrassing. I've come to discuss tomorrow. The Attorney General relayed to me your desire for a more modest ceremony. I've changed my mind. I'm sorry? I said I've changed my mind. We will have a procession, and I will walk to the cathedral with the casket. You must have done a lot of preparation for this, because I feel like it's so emotional to, like, get there and just show up and, and have to do that kind of, like, emotional work right away without sort of, um, I don't know, the lead up of, like, a, you know, a month shoot before you do that kind of scene or, you know. It's a weird thing. You sort of kind of go in sort of dry in a way. Everybody else has this kind of, like, camaraderie and they've been doing this thing and you're right. sort of essentially like a a day player. Like I had a little honey wagon, like my little like jail cell thing. <laughs> and, um, and it's a strange thing to sort of drop in into the middle of like everybody else's world. But I'd spent like a lot of time in the area itself. Again, geography, because it's a four hour train ride from New York to Boston. And so I could just kind of like go up and day trip and spend time up there and, and then the only accent be gone too. for a couple of times and the accent and really just like listen to the accent. We had a dialect coach who was great. Yeah. But just I find that so helpful to just be in the actual place so that you're yeah. kind of absorbing it. Yeah. All the time. Like that just makes it see, feel so much easier. Yeah, because there are like particular cultures in different towns and I, they were and they were so particular about that when I went up to this area there's these towns that all abut each other but they're I mean you know they're and but they're so distinct right you know and like you go to Beverly and they're like don't you dare make it sound like Gloucester and you go to Gloucester <laughs> and they're like we are nothing like Manchester by the sea and you're like oh god I That's hope that you guys so funny. I hope it's okay did um, you hear from the any of them like is, they're like it hasn't come out yet so I haven't oh, heard right. any of the people that I met there like nobody's come and said like you <laughs> You nailed it. <laughs> you nailed Sounded it. Sounded really like good really from someone who down. doesn't know the like <laughs> distinctions of those, but it sounded pretty convincing. Thanks. Well, <laughs> after having like listened to Jackie and then like listen like the it's like a voice meld. Uh, the two of you. you. Yeah, that's a. It was fun. It's, people definitely accused me of like doing it by accident all the time. That they'd be like, stop, because you unconsciously I think start going like, ah, oh, because it's fun. I mean. I'm sure you've had that with the Maryland too, the sort of breathiness. It's so, it, there's something so glamorous about like talking like that. There is, there's something like really, um, I never, I just remember one day on set, like being all sort of Maryland out and seeing people look at me and I'm very much like a shrink and hide kind of person. And I just had a moment of like, oh, well this could be fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't so bad, I understand, I'm getting it. <laughs> You want to keep it down, you fucking morons? My kids are sleeping. I'm so oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. I, I, I mean, I didn't think we were that loud. You want to get these fucking pinheads out of my house, please? What were your toughest days um, making the movie, and how do you prepare for them, and how do you distance yourself from them? Um, <laughs> if there's even an answer to that. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it's kind of a mystery still. I think, but um, I think the, har the hardest on this was definitely um, the assassination day because we we shot the actual assassination one one day and then the you know driving off to the hospital like on the highway on another day. But because the the film of the actual history is so well known, it was really hard because I felt like you're constricted by the historical truth of what happened. So like you have to be facing a certain way when it happens and then facing another way and then physically do another thing. And um, you obviously have to be there emotionally, but then you can't be like hysterical crying because she wasn't or like screaming because she wasn't or like, you know, you, you're very constrained and like you're both your physical and facial expression, which I think is was really unusual. I don't think I'd ever experience that before because you can usually just like take in Dream the scene and yeah, yeah. do what you want so um and it's of course like the worst thing you could possibly imagine not very pleasant to ever have to do those sorts of scenes and we're lucky that we only act them and of course 
some people have to it's actually live them, them which yeah. is incomparable. Um, but yeah, what about you? What was, I mean, I can imagine the what happens in in your film is literally the worst. It's like the worst of the worst. Imaginable. What? But I know what you mean about like when you're trying to copy something that actually was and like when you're trying to sort of like recreate like a photograph or like something that's like publicly recorded it's so you feel like you're kind of like in a tight suit and you're like is that did I get my ankle at the right right thing and it's it's a little bit like constricting and then it's hard to sort of breathe the like the life back into it when you're trying to get this form really yeah really tightly really correctly it's it's yeah you're like how can I be like emotionally true, true and bring and myself to it but yeah. also be like very exactly doing what someone else totally. is doing. Totally. I know, it's like two brains. Yeah. 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 But those tough Manchester days were like, there, there was something weirdly, there was something about that um, train ride, like back and forth from New York to Boston that was really helpful because it was like a little bit of time to like separate from my own life, but like not get too far away from it. Right. And then go into the place that we had to go into and then also have that time to like distance myself from what I had just experienced. But right. exactly like you said, like the thing that actually really um, always grounded me and got me through it was like, it's diff it's a difficult place to go, but I am at the end of the day pretending to go through it. I'm going right. through it as authentically as possible and trying to be as tr true and as honest and as like there as I possibly can. Right. But there are people who have gone through this and like right. it's for them that like, it's like those are like, I cried their tears, like thinking about like right. people who actually have, that's just. Yeah, and also I almost feel like at work, like I like getting it out at work. It's like, it saves my rest of my life from having the like <laughs> crazy emotionality. Totally. Like if I find myself not working on something very emotional for a while. I'm I like, find my life gets a little bit chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> I know it all, I was like, I know I felt like I was doing this play and like so much got out on stage and like the rest of my life, I was like, yeah. So nice little equilibrium so plays over right now. Like, I got lots of feelings. <laughs> People like to believe in fairy tales. Don't let it be forgot that for one brief, shining moment, what was that like, like starting young? How do you feel it changed the way that you are now as an actor? When did you know that you wanted to really do this for your life? Yeah, I started, how old were you when you started? 11. Yeah. You? Yeah, around the, like same. Around the same age. It's a funny thing, you know, it turned out all right, but it isn't like a life that I would, um, um, want necessarily or, or 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 it was really hard when I started out and um just like sort of the bottom of absolutely every barrel and like my first agent was also a part-time undertaker no yeah that's really uh -huh. crazy and <laughs> how um, did that combination come about you know it's just it was I, I don't know <laughs> I don't know it's like a really odd pair of professions to match but that was like that's like where it all kind of began so like sitting here with you now I'm like it worked out okay but it's definitely like wow like a really long way and not necessarily like a very nice one it's like a hard wow. sort of childhood to have or like a lack of a childhood to have um, um and I'm I'm I do love doing it and I still love doing it and I can't really imagine doing anything else and I want to keep doing it but it's uh, I don't know, when I see kids on set or like when I work with kids in movies, I feel really torn about um, their role there or... Yeah, yeah, and we end up doing that a lot too. Like I feel like more than men, because so many female parts are like moms. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like I feel like I always work with a kid practically. I know, I know, um, I know, I know. And I feel like an extra sort of protectiveness and also a desire to be like, so do you have anything other interests? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, totally. Yes, you, you should really what get into you? science. science. <laughs> Girls in science are so yeah. cool. Was there a defining moment that you knew that this is, this was the career for you? It's funny because I, I forget where, I read it recently that someone was saying like, think about what you love when you're 11 and like that's your, like for adults who are kind of 
feeling lost or whatever and like try and regain that. And it's funny that they like pinpointed that age because you know, you say you started then, that's when I started, my husband started dancing then. It's like, I feel that there is something mm. around that time where you kind of do have your instinct about, um, you know, what you really love, what you love doing. And I don't know where it came from, but I, because there's like no one in my family I was told, you know, who was ever really performing, I, you know, and, and it wasn't like, it was no option to me. Like right. it didn't seem like anything possible or realistic from, it wasn't presented to me in it that way and by anyone, um, but I really loved it. So now I take that as sort of like, oh, I must have known then. But I think it took me a really long time to accept it because I came from such like a, like, serious academic family where like the only thing that was like acceptable was to be like very like literate and educated and like you know you become a professor or a doctor or a lawyer like you know you're I mean Jewish like <laughs> very Jewish and so it was like silly always to be like like act my dad pulled me aside when I was like 25 and was like, I think it's time for you to go to law school. It was like, I think you should, or, or graduate school. He's wow. like, you like he, you know, and I was obviously wow. like working a lot and like, wow. you know, and he was like, I, you know, I think you should find something like, not that he was like saying that I, that it was like bad, but more that he was like, I think you'll be more fulfilled if like you have, you know, something more like a life of the mind, you know? Um, so it took me a while, I think, coming from that background to be like, no, this is what I want and this is what I love and I enjoy this and like accepting that what I love is like not hyper, like, you know, academic. It can be very stimulating and it can be intellectual. It isn't always, um, but yeah. That it's, yeah. Do you think that, um, that that motivated you to direct? Probably, probably. Yeah, especially with like what I chose to direct was like so like serious. <laughs> like I wasn't like, I'm gonna make a romantic comedy, which is probably more like my personal taste of what I like seeing, um, that I probably was still like trying to show my dad like <laughs> that I can be a serious person um but yeah I think um it's definitely motivated me to to try other things because um I do find myself more fulfilled when I'm when I feel like I'm like learning something from what I'm doing and pushing myself to new places I'm sure that's universal and but, um, but was that just like a whole other level directing? I just can't even imagine. I can't even begin to wrap my brain around like, it's the complications. It's just really complications different, of... I feel like. It's Did really you enjoy different. It? Directing. I really loved it, but it's totally different. Like acting, you can just lose yourself in your own, um, own world. And directing, you have to be so conscious of everything and managing lots of things. Um, it really was close to parenting to me because you're taking care of all these people and trying to encourage the best out of them and creating a vision for like, you know, their their future and their creation. I don't know why you guys bother getting on the friggin' boat. What do you mean? We love the sea. Oh yeah? How many beers do you have on the sea? Eight. Eight? Yeah, eight over a seven hour period. Have you ever thought about directing? I can't, I can't, I couldn't, I can barely even like put together like a sentence. It's like, yeah, like right. a movie. Yeah, I right. truly cannot, no. like I'm a gog, like I cannot imagine. No, I can How on top of everything else, like you did that and No, that's and very nice, but it. it's, it's, you'd be, so you'd be well capable. I mean, if you don't want to, that's another thing. <laughs> no, no, um, I, I. What are you like from a director when you're working with them? I guess different things from different people, I suppose. Um, 
I've worked with this woman, Kelly Reichardt, three times now, and yeah. we know each other so well that we don't really have to communicate too much. She can sort of come up to me and like, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. <sighs> but you know what? I, the thing that I, one thing that I feel like I've learned is how to how to be better for a director is to really know their world, um, to know, to like, to obviously like watch the movies that they've made, but also to know like what they're influenced by and what they're inspired by. Right. So I know like how I can best sort of like serve their vision because ultimately it really is a director's medium. Yes. And like, you're just like a, like, I just think I'm like, just like a, like a cog, like I'm like a right. color that you're painting with. And like, how do you want me to like express this thing in your world? Because like what's right in, Kenny's world isn't necessarily right in somebody else's world. Right. So I used to think that directors would hold like a magic key. I used to like show up and think like, fantastic. Like I got this job with like somebody that I respect and now they're gonna show me how to do my job. They're gonna like right. tell me how to do it. They're gonna like unlock something inside of me. And they would just look at me and say like, what do you have to give? Like, what are you <laughs> gonna do? I hired you to do this job. Like what's right. the magic thing you're gonna give me? And it took me a second to realize like, oh they need me to do what I want them to do. So I have to be the person, in right. fact. So at this point, I don't know how much I really look for anything specifically from a director. I think it's a little bit different in theater. It's like a really director dependent. But uh, in movies, I just really like somebody who's, I loved Kenny because he was, he was not outside of the experience at all. He was like, he, he jumped in the hole with you. Like you would right. hear him call cut and then you would hear him crying because he was oh. not, he wasn't separate from like the actor's experience at all, oh. um, and that was that was that's sweet. Nice. What about you? Is there something? But wait, what about if? So that's that's really smart, and I feel like I'm like taking advice. <laughs> I'm like, mm, this is good. The good need advice. <laughs> um, but like, what if the person you're working with has made one movie, or it's their first movie, or their movies are like different? You know, some there are some directors who like every movie they make is kind of like a different thing. How do you feel like you understand the the world? Really like through their references. Like I always right. ask like, what do you think this relates to? And like, what, a, like when you think about this movie, like are there other things that like, are there other threads that you see to it? Like are there right. things that have, are there other like works of art that have inspired you that are like coming through you and into this like, new thing that you now want to make. Right. But then also at a certain point, you also have to become director proof because I've definitely, I'm sure you've had this experience of like working with people that you like don't want to take that on. Oh, and right. so you have, it's you kind of have to. Right. Or sometimes they don't talk to you or yeah, you're yeah. like, what am I what supposed are, to do? Yeah, yeah to you do? like I literally don't know yeah. if you're happy or just not paying attention or thinking about something else or yeah.